In the annals of my life's chronicles, there exists a chapter so laden with tumult, betrayal, and heartache, it verges on the surreal. Divorced, I stand, from the man I once pledged eternity to, yet the reasons behind our parting are as shocking as they are incomprehensible. He, the very man who shared my son's bloodline, found solace in the arms of his own daughter-in-law, a betrayal that still reverberates through the corridors of my consciousness. Yet, amidst the debris of a shattered marriage, a peculiar sense of liberation seeped into my soul, for his transgressions were not confined to matters of the heart, no, they extended to realms far more insidious. For you see, my erstwhile spouse harbored a penchant for gambling, a reckless abandon that saw fortunes squandered and futures imperiled. It dawned upon me, post-divorce, that his affections were never genuine, merely a guise to gain access to my family's wealth garnered through generations of dedication to the medical profession. A paramedic by vocation. I tread the corridors of healing, my hands anointed with the balm of compassion, yet little did I know that the maladies afflicting my own hearth would prove more insidious than those I sought to remedy. With the vows exchanged, Peter shed the cloak of diligence, discarding his livelihood like a moth to flame. Hey Olivia, give me some money, he'd demand, his tone a discordant symphony of entitlement and coercion. How many times had I capitulated, ensnared by the tendrils of fear and apprehension, my compliance a meager offering to stave off his wrath? And yet, with each concession, the abyss yawned wider, consuming the remnants of my self-respect. Days blurred into nights each one a testament to the shackles that bound me to a fate of perpetual servitude. Did you lose? I'd inquire, my voice a fragile whisper in the tempest of his fury. His gaze, laden with contempt, would meet mine, the silence pregnant with the weight of our disillusionment. Divorce loomed on the horizon like a specter, yet I dared not succumb, lest my son bear witness to the fractures within our familial tapestry. Matt, my beloved son, a paragon of virtue amidst the chaos that engulfed our lives. A prodigy of medicine. His ascent mirrored the aspirations of generations past, yet his journey was fraught with the specter of paternal neglect. Hang in there, he'd say, his voice a beacon of solace in the storm. And so, I endured, each day a testament to the resilience of a mother's love. Yet, as fate would have it, tragedy struck with the cruel hand of inevitability. Today marks one year since the passing of my son, his memory a poignant reminder of the fragility of life's tapestry. Amidst the relics of his childhood, I find solace, lost in the sepia-toned reverie of yesteryears. This, then, is the tale of my son, my ex-husband, and me, woven into the fabric of destiny's whims. As I prepare for yet another night shift, the specter of Peter looms large, a silent sentinel of domestic discord. You haven't finished the laundry, he chides, his words a serrated blade against the canvas of my resolve. Anger simmers beneath the veneer of civility, yet I dare not succumb, for within the crucible of adversity lies the crucible of resilience. In the wake of my husband's callous remark, an unsettling silence settled over our once serene abode, shattered by the eruption of emotions that had long simmered beneath the surface. It was as if the floodgates of my suppressed frustrations had been thrust open by the sheer force of his words, unleashing a deluge of pent-up resentment and disillusionment. His retort, dripping with indignation and cloaked in the guise of domestic duty, struck me like a bolt of lightning amidst the calm of our shared space. In that moment, I found myself not merely incensed, but utterly bewildered by the audacity of his words, the implication of his statement cutting through the air like a sharpened blade. Huh? You do realize you can go to work in peace because I'm here at home, right? You should be more grateful. His voice echoed through the cavernous halls of our home, each syllable laden with wounded pride and simmering resentment. It was a verbal parry, a calculated maneuver designed to deflect attention from his own shortcomings and cast me as the unwitting antagonist in our ongoing battle of wills. And yet, even as his words reverberated through the confines of our shared space, I could not help but feel a pang of sympathy for the man who stood before me. Beneath his bravado and bluster lay a sense of insecurity and inadequacy, a vulnerability that he sought to conceal behind a facade of bravado and bravura. In that moment, I realized that our marital discord was not merely a clash of egos but a reflection of the deeper fissures that had long plagued our relationship. It was a symphony of misunderstandings and miscommunications, 
a dance of two souls struggling to find common ground amidst the tumult of life's vicissitudes. And so, as I stood there grappling with the tumult of emotions that threatened to consume me, I resolved to confront our shared demons head on. For beneath the surface of our marital discord lay the seeds of redemption, waiting to be sown amidst the wreckage of our fractured bond. Time, that elusive currency, slipped through my grasp like sand through clenched fingers, a precious commodity I could ill afford to squander. I'm out of time, just handle it, I murmured, the weight of my responsibilities pressing upon me like a leaden shroud. However, also, I won't be coming home today because I have a night shift, I added hastily, my words a prelude to departure, a fleeting reassurance in the wake of his ire. The fateful juncture arrived amidst the indigo hues of night, a harbinger of calamity shrouded in the cloak of urgency. Olivia, please come to the nurse station urgently, the words, laden with portent, hung heavy in the air, a harbinger of tribulation yet unseen. Urgency propelled my steps as I hastened towards the epicenter of chaos, the clamor of my heart drowning out the cacophony of the hospital's nocturnal symphony. Upon my arrival, the hand of fate, cold and unyielding, seized me in its grasp, delivering unto me a missive wrought with despair. A doctor, his voice a somber dirge amidst the chorus of the night, bore tidings of woe, each syllable a dagger to the heart. Matt, paralyzed from the waist down, the words hung in the air, pregnant with the weight of irrevocable truth, a testament to the capricious whims of fate. As I stood vigil by his bedside, my heart heavy with the burden of parental anguish, a figure emerged from the shadows, his presence a balm amidst the storm. What are you doing here? I queried, my voice a whisper amidst the cacophony of emotions that swirled within me. Same as you, he replied, his words a bridge forged in the crucible of shared sorrow, a fleeting moment of solidarity amidst the discord of our discordant union. Together, we bore witness to the tableau of tragedy that lay before us, his fianchi, a figure of grace and fortitude, her presence a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Hello, I'm Kim, Matt's fiancé. Her words, laden with warmth and empathy, offered solace amidst the maelstrom of grief that engulfed us. And as I gazed upon my son, his form supine amidst the trappings of medical intervention, I found solace in the knowledge that amidst the tempest of despair, the bonds of family endure. The doctor's words resonated through the sterile confines of the hospital room, each syllable a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the relentless march of fate. As he spoke, his voice carried the weight of a thousand sorrows, each word echoing like a mournful dirge in the silence that enveloped us. In that moment, I found myself transported to a realm where time seemed to stand still where the boundaries between hope and despair blurred into obscurity. As a surgeon, I had been trained to confront adversity with stoicism and resolve. Yet in the face of my son's plight, I found myself grappling with a sense of helplessness that bordered on despair. The revelation of the extent of my son's injuries struck me like a physical blow, each word a dagger to the heart, each sentence a testament to the cruel capriciousness of fate. And yet, amidst the pall of despair that hung heavy in the air, I clung to a flicker of hope, a silent prayer that somehow, against all odds, my son would emerge victorious in his battle for survival. But even as I clung to that fragile thread of hope, I could not escape the harsh reality of the situation. The doctor's words, delivered with clinical precision, painted a grim picture of the road ahead, a road fraught with uncertainty and pain. And so, as I stood there, a silent witness to my son's suffering, I resolved to steel myself for the trials yet to come. For in that moment, amidst the somber symphony of the doctor's words, I found a newfound determination to fight alongside my son to be his unwavering advocate in the face of adversity. Though the path ahead may be fraught with obstacles and challenges, I vowed to walk it with courage and conviction guided by the unshakable belief that love has the power to conquer even the greatest of trials. And so, as the echoes of the doctor's explanation faded into the recesses of my mind, I embraced the uncertainty of the future with a steadfast resolve to never waver in my faith, for it is in the darkest of times that the true strength of the human spirit shines brightest. The surgery, a delicate ballet of skill and precision, seemed to offer a fleeting respite from the tempest of uncertainty that engulfed us. Yet, even amidst the flickering candlelight of hope, the specter of mortality loomed large, a shadow that refused to be dispelled. His condition is critical, 
The doctor's pronouncement echoed through the chambers of my consciousness, each syllable a harbinger of the trials yet to come. Yet, amidst the labyrinthine corridors of fate, destiny saw fit to unravel a tapestry of betrayal that rendered the fabric of familial bonds asunder. The inn, a bastion of respite amidst the ceaseless clamor of life's vicissitudes, bore witness to a scene so shocking it defied comprehension. My husband and my son's fianchi, entwined in an embrace born of duplicity, their clandestine lays on a dagger to the heart. The revelation of Kim's duplicity, once a paragon of virtue in my eyes, left me adrift in a sea of disillusionment, my faith in humanity shaken to its very core. Enough, let's get divorced. The words, wrought with righteous indignation, hung heavy in the air, a testament to the shattered remnants of a union once bound by love. And so, as the years unfurled like the petals of a withered rose, I found solace in the quiet vigil by my son's bedside, a silent sentinel amidst the ceaseless tumult of life's vicissitudes. Seven years passed, each day a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, yet still, my son remained ensnared in the labyrinthine recesses of unconsciousness. As I listened to the voice on the other end of the line, a sense of disbelief mingled with cautious optimism welled up within me. In the midst of my grief, this unexpected call seemed like a lifeline thrown into the tempest of my despair. The rain cascaded down the window panes of the taxi, a relentless torrent that mirrored the tumult of emotions raging within me. Yet, amidst the chaos of the storm, a quiet calm settled over me as I clung to the promise of what this call might bring. With each word spoken, the voice on the other end wove a tapestry of possibility, each syllable a ray of light cutting through the darkness that had engulfed me. It was as if fate itself had intervened, offering me a glimmer of hope amidst the desolation that gripped my soul. And so, with a heart heavy with trepidation yet buoyed by newfound optimism, I embraced the uncertainty of what lay ahead. For in that moment, as the rain beat against the windows and the world outside faded into obscurity, I found solace in the knowledge that even in the darkest of times, there is always a flicker of hope waiting to be kindled. And though the road ahead may be fraught with challenges and uncertainties, I vowed to tread it with courage and determination guided by the beacon of hope that had been offered to me in my darkest hour. Minutes gone I nodded solemnly, relishing the moment as the realization dawned upon them like a thunderclap in the stillness of the funeral parlor. That's right. I continued, my voice a steady cadence amidst the tempest of their incredulity. I've donated it all to charity in Matt's name. Their protests. Once a cacophony of entitlement and avarice, now faltered like wilted blossoms in the face of immutable truth. But, but why? They stammered, their voices a plaintive lament amidst the silence that enveloped us. And yet, even as their pleas fell upon deaf ears, I found solace in the knowledge that amidst the rubble of betrayal, a phoenix had risen from the ashes. For Matt, I replied, my voice a whisper amidst the tumult of their disbelief for the son we both failed to protect. And with that, I turned on my heel, leaving them to grapple with the consequences of their actions, their protests fading into the ether like echoes in the night. As I walked away, a sense of liberation washed over me like a cleansing tide, the burdens of the past cast aside like shackles in the wake of newfound freedom. And though the road ahead may be fraught with uncertainty, I tread it with the unwavering resolve of a mother's love my son's memory a beacon of light amidst the darkness that threatens to engulf us all. The revelation of my son's altruistic wishes, spoken in earnest before his untimely demise, served as a beacon of light amidst the darkness of our grief. If I die before mom, I want all my savings and possessions to go to United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, his words echoed in the recesses of my mind, a testament to the selflessness that defined his character. And so, in accordance with his wishes, I bequeathed his inheritance to the very organization he held dear, leaving nothing for myself, let alone for the covetous pair before me. The minor altercation that ensued, fueled by their avarice and my steadfast resolve, drew the gaze of onlookers, their curiosity piqued by the spectacle unfolding before them. My ex-husband's pallid visage betrayed the magnitude of his miscalculation, his expectations shattered like shards of glass against the immutable truth of my son's wishes. Yet, even amidst the tumult of our discord, a thread of irony wove its way through the fabric of our confrontation, revealing the true folly of their desires. What are you both doing for work now? I inquired, 
My voice tinged with a mixture of incredulity and disdain. And to my surprise, they responded with a candor that bordered on resignation, their once grandiose aspirations reduced to menial pursuits in the wake of their recklessness. The revelation of their ill-conceived purchase, financed by dubious means and predicated on the presumption of my son's inheritance, served as a bitter reminder of the consequences of their greed. How did you think you'd get enough for a sports car? I queried, my words a scathing indictment of their folly. And yet, even as they stood before me, chastened by the harsh reality of their circumstances, I found little solace in their plight. For in the crucible of their misfortune, I saw reflected the folly of my own choices, the myriad ways in which I had failed to protect my son from the vicissitudes of life. And yet, amidst the wreckage of our shared misfortune, I resolved to forge ahead, my son's memory a guiding light in the darkness that threatened to engulf us all. The passing of time, a relentless march towards oblivion brought with it a measure of solace tempered by the bittersweet remembrance of days gone by. Today, on the anniversary of my son's passing, I find myself lost in reverie, leafing through the pages of his album, each image a poignant reminder of a life cut short. And yet, amidst the pain and sorrow that threatens to consume me, I find solace in the knowledge that my son's spirit lives on, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness that threatens to engulf us all. And so, with renewed determination, I resolve to live my life to the fullest, honoring his memory with every breath I take.